Hello everyone. If you can clearly define the difference between a API gateway and a load balancer, this video is not for you. But if you want to learn the difference between an API, API gateway and a load balancer, make sure you watch this video until the end. And also uh, the slide decks and notes, those resources can be accessible for my YouTube subscribers. So if you want to get the access to my resources and slide deck and notes, Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and let's get to the video. API Gateway versus Load Balancer. So before we going forward with the specifically with the API Gateway and Load Balancer stuff, let's hang on with what is the difference between API versus API Gateway. So API stands for the Application Programming Interface. So for example, you, you can have YouTube API, Google Docs API and you know there are different APIs that you can access. So also I have added reference to a sample API references. Uh, I think it's yeah YouTube version 3 uh, API. So you can have a look you know just to get familiar with what API so. And when we move to the API gateways so and before that uh, this is how we can access an so a bunch of API here we have inventory API product info API without going through an API gateway so we can see uh, we can see directly access from mobile and from work from web clients can access these APIs directly so let's see where the API gateway comes into the play so API gateway acts as a door for different client requests that use multiple APIs so for example if we create a website even my uh, personal website I use YouTube API and also some other APIs to author authenticate and do stuff so think of an application that use multiple APIs in practically we use multiple APIs in our project right we can use file manage APIs authentication authorization APIs YouTube APIs and many more so I also have added uh, example API gateway link where you can uh, go through the docs and get an idea so if we go move to the uh, diagram here here you can see clearly how we have where the api gateway comes into the play so api gateway sits between a bunch of apis and the users so if you look clearly you can see some of the stuff stuff which were inside the apis like authentication authorization if we move to the previous image you can see this authentication authorization SSL stuff everything was happening inside the API but if we have a look in this image you can see those stuff have come inside API gateway so we'll discuss about that in uh, future slides so simply this is where the API gateway comes into play so you guys don't have to you know confuse between an API a single API and an API gateway now let's move to the responsibilities of an API gateway. So responsibilities of API gateway is mainly the API management. So API gateways can enforce security policies, authentication, access control measures and different stuff which are related to API management. So let's go one by one. Uh, API gateways are responsible to do the authentication and authorization stuff. You know, so different APIs need specific authentication to be able to access. This authentication can be done uh, from API gateway level. So as I shown in the previous uh, image here, you can see the authentication and authorization stuff has come to the API gateway level. We can do it in each inside each of the API uh, API level, but if we introduce an API gateway, it's an easy way because all the requests come through the API gateway like it act as the single door of entry for all the requests. So we can do the authentication and authorization stuff in the API gateway. And rate limiting. Uh, we can limit the number of hits a single API gets in a second uh, because all the requests goes through the API gateway. So we can do the rate limiting easily from the API gateway side and next thing is caching uh, you can save responses for specific amount of time you know without hitting the endpoint uh, again and again so uh, we can do it in the 
uh, API gateway level. So without, uh, for example, let's say the same response that is cached for two minutes, let's say, if multiple requests comes between those two minutes wall, we don't have to hit the API uh, endpoint specifically and uh, increase its rate. We can simply response, uh, give the response of the cached uh, response from the API gateway. That's where we can do the caching and also protocol transformation this is also very important i think most of you guys uh, are, uh, know about rest api uh, protocol mainly but there are multiple uh, protocols like grpc and many other protocol transformation so what we can do is from an api gateway if we have api gateway let's say the client uses rest api to call the api but the backend uses a different protocol like grpc we can do the transformation inside the API gateway. So API gateway is responsible for this trans protocol transformation stuff. So we can uh, get the request and transform it to another protocol, get the response from that backend and convert it to the REST API protocol and send it. This can be done from the API gateway level. And the next thing is routing and versioning. So, you know, popular APIs have uh, multiple versions so if you have a look uh, even the youtube api that i showed it has version 3 it has version 1 version 3 so a different type of versioning is there to handle those versioning you know if you want to access the specific version of the api we can handle that in the uh, api gateway level rather than writing the logic to transform the uh, request to the valid version we can uh, route it properly from the api gateway because it's the single point of entry for all the requests and also analytics so it's easy analyze the number of requests that are coming through because as i said all the requests are coming through the api gateway so we can uh, easily analyze them and do the analysis part so these are the responsibilities or these are the things that can be done from the api gateway level okay now let's move to the load balancing part so if you look close on this image about the load balancer at a glance you can see load balancer is in front of the api gateways so let's go through this uh, image a bit you can see you have we have multiple clients here mobile clients web clients all the request comes to the load balancer before it access the other physical or virtual servers so our api gateway and the backend or database everything is inside this uh, physical or virtual machine in instance before it goes to this physical uh, instances or virtual instances it hits the load balancer so load balancer acts in the network level so that's the first thing that uh, you should understand so load balancer is responsible for sending network requests for different servers so here we have three instances of the of servers all the requests come to load balancer and it manage and it sends those uh, requests for the proper or else the available uh, virtual machine instances and inside these servers we have api gateways and apis as well hosted and deployed so let's go to responsibilities of load balancer the main responsibility of load balancer is not authentication or authorization stuff it's balancing the traffic load or else traffic distribution it has some predefined algorithms such as uh, round robin least connection or weighted distribution Th those are some of common algorithms which used to find uh, which request which server has the least amount of load at the moment and distribute the traffic and also uh, It can do the health checks as well So monitor the health of each server and identify whether it's up or down or is it available or unavailable and dynamically adjust the load uh, on that one and that's one more important thing that uh, load balancers are responsible of that's the session persistence so ensuring the subsequent requests are passed to the same server so what does it mean by uh, this session persistence means 
let's see we have a client and we send the initial request for this uh, machine instance one let's see a user added something to their shopping cart and it's stored in this instance one and before checkout it update the cart so it comes another request so at the moment the previous cart uh, cart values or uh, shopping data is available only in this main instance it doesn't have time to sync between all those three levels so if you want to update that same shopping cart this request must be sent to this instance one because it has this users uh, shopping cart information at that moment so to do that this load balancer should remember where the previous request was headed so that's called this uh, session persistence so it's something main uh, that's very important that is handled uh, by load balancers so as i usual i think uh, we discuss about health checks uh, so uh, monitor the health of each server so these are the main things main uh, concerns on the load balancer so and also one thing another thing is ssl termination you know decrypt uh, decrypting the https to http and stuff so this can also be done on the load balancer level so it will reduce the load for the backend server so this is also something that can be done uh, from the uh, load balancer level and finally if we place the load balancer and api gateway in a chart like this in a flow diagram so the client requested it first hits the load balancer then it goes to the api gateway and then it goes the uh, backend servers it may be microservices databases and uh, so on and also uh, i've have an article about the comparison table the slide doesn't have enough space to do that so i will add that link uh, on the description so it has a kind of a comparison table between api gateway and load balancers where you guys can go through it so make sure you uh, subscribe to my youtube channel before accessing those resources because it's available only for my youtube subscribers and i hope you learned something out of it and if you have any questions make sure you drop a comment and let's meet with another awesome video like this have a nice day